It has been one crazy ride for the Denver Broncos over this past couple of seasons. It's more like let's hide. Anyway, we're going to talk about this Denver Broncos team. This one might cause some flares. I'll just say that right now with this mock draft. Just bear with me. I got some. I got a strategy behind this. We'll talk about it. Let me know your thoughts. Let's get into the free agent signings and the roster needs before we get into the mock draft. Then we'll talk about that seven round mock draft and the thumbnail. You're like, whoa, sparks are flying. Onto the free agent signings, and they bring back Michael Burton, good fullback, one of the better fullbacks actually in the NFL. You got Josh Reynolds coming over from the Lions. I like this deal. I thought it was really good. They need more receiving talent. So I, I think that on a two-year deal is very fair. $4.5 million for Josh Reynolds. He's a really solid number two, number three wide receiver. Little Jordan Humphreys, you know him and Sean Payton. They've got a good connection, obviously, so he's back. Same thing with Alden Troutman. Those connections are invaluable, so I, I understand why you bring back those guys. And then Matt Parrott comes over this year as the Cam Flaming replacement swing tackle. They were so fortunate to stay healthy for the entirety of the season except for one game where Mike McGlinchey missed I think it was the last game or nothing like something like that Calvin Throckmorton great depth on the interior of your offensive line on a one-year deal overall simple signings but good signings on the offense side of the ball they've been very strategic about this not doing anything crazy defensively wise I love the Malcolm Roach signing dude was really good for the Saints last year in a rotation when he was out on the field so two-year deal it's a cheap contract and somebody that I think is going to be a really, really nice impact player as a run defender for the team. Cody Barden, linebacker, Justin Stratnard as well as a one-year deal, but Barden figures to step up into the starting role uh, after losing Josie Jewell, at least combination with Alex Singleton, and they can get away with it because they also do just, you know, they can get their, their five-man fronts and have one linebacker out there, Vance Joseph's defense, sometimes variable on that. He still uses two linebackers, and Barton, you figure, would be the other starter to go along with Singleton. And then they also signed Brandon Jones in the secondary to help out for sure. He had a breakout season for Miami, and he gives you some versatility. He can line up man-to-man -man and cover some guys and much-needed depth in that. He'll be a starter, obviously, in that secondary, but Caden Stearns with some uncertainty you got pj lock in there maybe jl skinner delarian turner yell so they needed more help and they needed like a solidified starter after letting go of justin simmons so i thought this was a really fair deal will let's to finish it up back on a two-year deal and get yourself a solid kicker around town but let's go on to the roster needs offensive line wise tackle of the future is the biggest thing that's standing out to me because Garrett Bowles, like, they've had no discussions, it seems like, in terms of a long-term extension. And he's been really good. Like, Garrett Bowles is still a very, very good left tackle. Overall, we'll see what they decide to do there. I'm going to be drafting somebody in the mid-round range. They could even look at this in the first round, possibly, depending on how much they want Garrett Bowles out the door. I don't, you know, I don't understand why I think Garrett Bowles still has plenty in the tank. I would actually give him an extension, personally. But I will be looking at giving, uh, giving another draft pick to develop behind him. Center, you know, from everything... I've heard from George Patton, they're going to rock with these three guys. They feel good with Wattenberg. They feel good with Forsyth and Sam Mustafer they brought in as the veteran in this room to compete. With those three guys, I think they're going to find a starting center. So I'm not really going to be looking to invest early in the center position. I'm probably going to be looking to more invest in a guard of the future since Throckmorton is only on a one-year deal. So maybe a guard for the future. But you got your starters with powers and minors. You got your starters at tackle. You got your swing tackle with Matt Pair. Just a developmental left tackle. Let's go on to the wide receiving core. You could upgrade anywhere. In this room, I think they need to still add, right? And you can tell Sean Payton wants to add more youth in this room. He's trying to get younger. So adding another explosive playmaker, a dynamic threat is going to be my option, whether that's tight end or whether that's wide receiver, one of those areas. Greg Dolchik, I still think there's a lot of upside there. It's just the injuries have been a big thing with him staying on the field. So, I, you know, I want to still add to this room because they use two tight ends out there. They use heavy personnel. So I do think it's a priority, and that's the reason why they brought Adam Troutman back. And the depth besides that is a little bit, you know, we shall see. On to the running back room. I love Javante Williams. I do think he'll be back to more usual Javante Williams we saw in his rookie year. Just got to come back from that ACL. Always takes time. And you got Samaj P. Ryan, Jaleel McLaughlin. Feel good about this room. Tyler Beatty. I will be looking to add to this late because I, I think they will, you know, want to use a rotation of running backs. This is not a high priority, though, on my list. Quarterback-wise, this is a high priority on my list. We are going to be looking at a quarterback 100%, whether this is a first-round pick, whether they're a trade-up, whether it's a, th a day-two pick even. Like, I don't rule that out either because this team could play it a little bit of a long-term approach take a year or two. This is like a two-year rebuild in my opinion. I know they said that they're trying to do this right away. 
I think this is a one to two year process. On the defense side of the ball, it is defensive line. Overall, I feel pretty confident they have their starters going into 2025 on this defensive line. Interior, yeah, you could still invest in this edge rush, possibly. And I listed it possibly because Drew Sanders, the way George Patton said, is they liked him off the edge. They liked the way he finished the season off the edge. And they view him as an edge rusher at this moment. Now, they're going to get together in the coaching staff and talk about that. So that could change. He could end up going back to linebacker full-time. I really don't know. I'm going to include him as an edge rusher. And with that, you have Nick Benito, Drew Sanders as your depth behind Jonathan Cooper and Baron Browner, who stepped up and was really good this season. So if he can stay healthy and he can be a star next year, like a legit breakout candidate. And then the interior of the defensive line, Zach Allen, Malcolm Roach, DJ Jones, uh, I'm, those are fine. Good starters. You got some depth with Henningsen and Uzurike. And, you know, with him coming back from the suspension, getting that, you know, hopefully third year, he can have a bit of a breakout or at least to be a good rotational player for them. But I'll be looking for a little bit more depth. DJ Jones is a free agent next year. Linebacker wise, this could be an area that they upgrade from, especially if Drew Sanders is going to move to edge full time. Like then it's going to be a pretty big need. And that's why, you know, this is where it's important to be in the room and to know those discussions. Overall, I will be investing in this linebacking position. Maybe not a early, early pick, but I do think this is a need. You had Alex Singleton as, as one of their locked-in starters. Cody Barton can play. You got Jonathan Griffith coming back from injury, so that's good. And we'll see what they want to do with Drew Sanders. But I will be looking at throwing a mid-round pick into this. Quarterback-wise, this is an area that they need. They need a, a cornerback number two. It's a big priority for me. And maybe they go out and still try to sign a veteran. I could see that very much. Like, there's a lot of, there's still plenty of corners out there. Stephon, Stephon Gilmore is out there. There's plenty of dudes that they can go out and sign hopefully to be a combination with Patrick Sertan on the outside since Van Joseph it does rely heavily on press man coverage I mean at least press on one side and the other side sometimes is off man coverage overall they play plenty of man coverage and match concepts so I think that that's a priority for this team is getting another cornerback I'll invest it in the draft I also think they need to invest in it in free agency get somebody get a veteran in before the season starts you got Jaquan McMillan who will be an exclusive restricted so that's why I outlined it in black he sh he'll be back uh, next year barring something crazy but you got Sertan who needs to get extended I'll just say that Riley Moss can compete in the slot too and then we go on to the safety position Brandon Jones Caden Stearns like if Stearns was healthy and I felt confident about this this would not be a need at all that does leave a little bit of concern here I'm not really gonna prioritize it too much since you got PJ Locke who is a solid player and can start for them and need be plus you got some youth with JL Skinner maybe more of a box hybrid safety Delarian Turner Yell also has some experience as a starter too it is time though for the draft and my first pick super bowers it's brock bowers from georgia i know you might be having some flashbacks saying oh we got no fan what back in 2019 or something like that in the first round brock bowers is different all right and i like Noah fan he's a solid tight end but Brock Bowers is a guy that doesn't come around. He is truly, in my opinion, a generational level talent. He is one of those guys, one of one, that you do not find or that comes around very often in a draft. Okay, And I don't want to throw that generational term out there. But look at his game. Like, what are Brock Bowers' weakness? Like, tell me how, other than injury, like, if he gets injured and has a really bad injury, like, that's the only thing that would deter him, in my opinion, from being a all-pro Pro Bowl tight end wide receiving weapon for your offense. And I know you need quarterback, but I'm just not forcing a quarterback at this pick unless they want to trade up, but they don't really have the draft capital, nor would I want to give the draft capital away because I think they, they need they need those draft picks. I'm being patient with the quarterback position. I'll say, hey, look, there's a guy, you know, we can take on day two. We can mold. We can do what we want. Or if we want to just rock with Jared Stidham, I'm okay with that. Taking a year to reset build up this roster 2025 you get your quarterback and you have more cap space you go from there like I'm not against that you still have veterans out there too Ryan Tannehill that they can sign etc and I say that might have instill a whole ton of confidence there are guys that you can sign I'm just not convinced that you have to go quarterback right this moment for the Broncos they need to be patient with this process Brock Bowers to me is a high level all pro talent and besides the size and maybe occasional drops he had this season, he was dealing with an injury too at the tightrope and came back record time. Like the dude is a rock star, man. He is a super weapon for your team, superpowers. And I love Brock Bowers as this first pick. We are taking a quarterback though. And this is Spencer Rattler, the Rattler. We're getting all the cool names out here for this Denver team. Now, I think Spencer Rattler 
pound. I mean, just one of the best fits for Sean Payton's scheme. And I think Spencer Rattler's weaknesses would be best for Sean Payton too, like in terms of what he can best correct. And you talk about Spencer Rattler, what does he do well? Short to intermediate passing. That is what Sean Payton wants too. Like he's that that Bill Walsh disciple, horizontal West Coast scheme, right? If that's what you think about Sean Payton's scheme, the timing and rhythm West Coast scheme. Well, Spencer Rattler, that's what he was good at. You know, what he wasn't good at was the hero ball stuff. The, you know, throw it deep and those sort of things. Like, that's not Spencer Rattler's game. I mean, you have some bad decisions here and there. Sometimes he misreads zone coverages. Overall, I think Spencer Rattler at this range is a great value. I like Rattler a ton. And I think he, that Sean Payton can get the best out of Spencer Rattler. And can be, I mean, he's one of the most accurate. I think he actually is the most accurate quarterback in my eyes in this draft class. Just straight up accuracy. Spencer Rattler is really accurate. Nonetheless, hopefully I did enough convincing there. But I really, I, I stand by this pick. I think he is a really good fit for Sean Payton. I think Spencer Rattler is underrated. And I do think he can be a starter. So Spencer Rattler is my pick for the Denver Broncos. On to the fourth round. The first fourth round pick, I'm going Kalen Carson. Wake Forest, a cornerback. He fits Van Joseph's scheme. He's got good uh, press man ability. He can play off man coverage. Can play press ma- zone. He's a really feisty corner at the catch point. Yeah, he had a bad game versus Keon Coleman. I mean, he fought Keon Coleman the best he could. I mean, Coleman's a great receiver, and I think he's a little underrated. But Carson definitely has those physical traits. He doesn't have the long speed, and that's okay. I think he's got good fluidity, though, to be able to hip flip his hips, play man coverage at a high level. On to our next fourth-round pick. I'm going Javon Foster, left tackle from Missouri. Getting that swing tackle early on, I mean, you can at least compete with Matt Parrott as your swing tackle. And long-term, he could fit that mold. I think that's his floor. But I do think he could be a starter and he's got great balance. He's got big time length 35 inch arms He's a a smooth. He's just really good balance dude, which is important as an offensive lineman Yeah, I don't know if he's got great athleticism. I don't know if that's his game He needs to work on his I mean I think it's his footwork is more of the issue because he can move in space like he can definitely run block and all those things So if you can work on his footwork work on some of his independent hand usage I think he can be a starter in the NFL So a nice little developmental guy at least if nothing else is a good swing tackle on to the iceberg Tommy Eichenberg he just fits the Sean Payton mold of a linebacker so I had to do it and Tommy Eichenberg is that old school mentality linebacker he's instinctual he's a downhill player he's not your man-to-man coverage guy and that's okay because a lot of times they just ask like Alex Singleton to do simple zone drop stuff that's really what they're going to ask a Tommy Eichenberg and that's fine so Eichenberg can do that and he can be that Cody Barton understudy slash I think he could even start early on like I think there's a chance but I don't know I think Eichenberg's a little underrated just because he is an older school linebacker Backer. Tyler Davis from Clemson, interior defensive line to finish out the fifth round. I'm gonna get a nice solid interior player. Once again, a little undersized. Sean Payne, that doesn't let that doesn't stop him from drafting guys like this. Ty, Tyler Davis, he's a super strong. He's got good balance. He's got good first step quickness. Just doesn't have that length profile or you know uber athleticism or that one standout trait that a lot of teams are looking for, right? But he's a good football player. He knows how to create pressure and hold the point of attack. On to our sixth round picks. I added a seventh round. I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. 203 is not the seventh round. <laughs> anyway, Jason McClellan from Alabama, going to be the running back pick here. Just add some more depth in this room because I do think that that could be a bit of a priority. And Javante Williams, he, you know, if the injury still is an issue, you have more depth in here with, Jacqu- with Julio McLaughlin and Samaze P. Ryan slash uh, so Javante Williams is a free agent in 2025. So Jace McClellan, I really like his power. I think he's a really, really nice in-between-the-tackles runner. And then final pick of the draft, I'm going Ladarius Henderson, the Wolverine from Michigan, transferred over from Arizona State. He's got good length. He's a young prospect, somebody that I look to take at the end of the draft. I don't think he's got the foot speed to play tackle, and that's fine. Just, again, somebody you take at the end of the draft to see if you can develop, have some more depth on that interior of the offensive line. Let's go on to the roster, though, after the draft. Everything that we've been able to do, and it starts with our first-round selection. Super Bowers, Brock Bowers, going to be that elite playmaker in this room. They need more dynamic playmakers, whether that's a tight end, wide receiver. I think Brock Bowers gives them that production that they have not had at the tight end position in a long, long time. And I feel confident that he is going to be at minimum like an 800 yard wider weapon and a blocking threat. Like get him on the move as a blocker. He's so dangerous. 
he's just he's a blue chip player. I, I can't say much more about that. And you got Greg Dolchik, they're still gonna use him because they play plenty of two tight end sets. Same thing with Adam Troutman. They're gonna get these guys on the room or you know in rotation. Bowers can play in the slot. So they you know, there's no worry about these guys aren't gonna be able to see the field. And then, you know, nothing we we don't draft a receiver here, just kinda ran out of picks. Plus I feel like Tim Patrick getting healthy. You got a little Jordan Humphrey, Brandon Johnson is a good rotational player too. Unless they trade it Cortland Sutton, which they would get another pick for that. Offensive line, we get Javon Foster for the future, slash a good swing tackle early on. And then Ladarius Henderson as some depth for their interior of the offensive line. Oh yeah, quarterback. We gotta talk about it. Spencer Rattler, as I was saying earlier, I just love the scheme fit with Spencer Rattler. To me, this is the ideal scenario for, for Rattler and Sean Payton's scheme and that horizontal West Coast scheme. I think that's what's gonna best fit Rattler, the short to intermediate passing game with that accuracy that he has. And then running back, Chase McClellan as that fourth, fifth running back in the room. Let's go on to the defense. Defense line, we didn't do a whole ton. I realized that, which is kind of interesting. But, you know, Tyler Davis on that interior defense line, I think he can be a rotational. I think he can actually play early on, if, especially if you have an injury or two. So he's going to compete with DJ Jones. So I think he'd be in that DJ Jones mold of the future slash Malcolm Roach. Actually, maybe more in that Roach range. But on to the uh, edge rushing room. We didn't do anything there because I mainly factored in Drew Sanders as an edge rusher, linebacker. Now, if you say, hey, Drew Sanders, we're going to move him back to linebacker, then let's go ahead and draft an edge rusher instead of that. So that's kind of what I would say to that. Cornerback-wise, we had in Kalen Carson. I mean, ideally, I would like to add in a corner a little earlier, but maybe hit free agency, as I was saying. Hit a Stephon Gilmore up. Go get a Xavier Howard. Go get one of those guys in free agency that's still available. Safety, we didn't do anything. Feel like they're in a decent spot at that point. So that is it here for the Denver Broncos. Mile high. No more hiding. No more riding. I don't know. Whatever you want to say. But I hope you guys have a cool end day. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. What would you do differently? Especially with that quarterback position. The first one's going to be a very interesting discussion. But I hope you guys have a cool end day. My name is Jesus Link. I'm doing my thing. I hope you do too. I'll talk to you later.